Hey, good morning, good afternoon. Thank you to everyone out there for joining this special edition of our Trending Energy News broadcast here. I uh, want to invite everybody, before we get started on, on some of the hot topics of the day, let you all know that whatever platform you may be watching on, uh, you've got a chance to drop some questions in the Q&A. We've got some people monitoring the chat, uh, whether that's questions about today's content or maybe content that you'd like to see uh, covered in the future. We'd love for you to drop some comments uh, or questions in there for us today. But with that, I want to get started. It's a, a pretty big moving day on the market out there across the energy space. And so we're going to take this time, if you haven't joined us before, and just real quickly hit the highlights out there, particularly in the oil and gas market uh, that we see and what those headlines are that are ultimately maybe affecting your energy spend and what to look out for moving forward. So with that, I want to start with crude, where maybe we don't see as much movement as some of the other topics that, that we'll hit on real quickly today. Out there in the crude space, we are moving higher, though. And actually, if we look at crude and product prices, so things like diesel, gasoline, uh, in a commodity sense, we're moving to some of the highest prices we've seen in as much as six weeks. Uh, really been kind of on a bullish run for about the past month or so. Uh, so we saw some weakness moving in not too long before that. We've got Overarching headlines in this market, OPEC Plus is bringing back supply. They're unwinding their production cuts. And so that's a big factor. That's about 400,000 barrels a day of supply per month that is coming back in. And we still have some anxiety, certainly, in this market uh, when we talk about the Delta variant. Uh, obviously, that, that carries a lot of concerns for a lot of different reasons. But a big one is that tends to affect travel demand in a pretty big way. We see that certainly uh, impacting jet fuel. Jet fuel is the one that, that is uh, most severely impacted, but we're also seeing this at a time when seasonal demand is, is winding down. That summer travel that we see in the nor northern hemisphere, that's calming down a bit, but we see prices going up right now. And, and the reason we see prices going up, we can tie largely to some of the events that we've seen in the U.S., particularly what we see around the hurricane season. Uh, so Hurricane Ida, which moved through uh, you know, a couple weeks back, we still are seeing some lingering effects of, of Hurricane Ida. Gulf of Mexico is huge for inter energy infrastructure in a lot of ways. One of the big ones uh, is offshore production. Now, normally, offshore production, they, you know, they're well used to hurricane season. They bounce back pretty quickly. That has not been the case with Hurricane Ida. We still have about half of our offshore oil production is offline, close to a million barrels a day. And that is closing in on 10% of U.S. supply, about 1% of global supply. So that's fairly significant. We also have refining structure uh, that remains offline at this point. So really disrupting the supply chain a little bit. We know that's going to bounce back in time. But for the time being, that continues to lead crude and product inventories lower and lower. Those inventories are already really low for this time of year. We don't have a lot of backup supply and storage. And so extending that deficit, even though we've got some concerns on the demand side, even though we've got some long-term supply maybe coming back, that remains a supportive factor in this market until we get some clarity around restoring those operations. And so for that reason, look at my screen right here. We're up about 1% on average today across some of our big crude benchmarks, uh, but hitting some key levels. WTI back above $70 a barrel, sitting here at $70.56. Brent, which typically trades at a bit of a premium, sitting there at $73.59. So some of the highest prices we've seen out there in the crude market last four to six weeks or so. So that's well supported, but not nearly as well supported as the other commodity I want to get to today, uh, which is what we see out there for U.S. natural gas. Uh, now, we talk about crude having a bit of a bullish month, maybe, uh, where for the past four weeks or so, we've generally trended towards higher prices. Natural gas really in the midst of a pretty bullish year for 2021. Uh, some of the stories, uh, some of the fundamental factors that we see driving it are the same. Uh, in terms of inventories are certainly lower in natural gas as well. That continues to add upside. Uh, maybe a bit of a difference, though, natural gas kind of shrugs off a lot of the COVID fears, a lot of the concerns around the Delta variant, because we don't see the demand elastic elasticity tied to the potential impact of COVID. We saw that in 2020, uh, when a lot of commodity spaces saw their most severe impact of COVID. Generally, your electricity demand, your heating demand, didn't see too much of a tangible effect. So that demand side holding up a little bit better, uh, but we have some of the same supply concerns. We talk about Hurricane Ida moving through, really damaged oil infrastructure, natural gas, no different. Uh, we've got a lot of key natural gas infrastructure, whether it's offshore production, whether it's the LNG facilities in Louisiana. And it's that offshore production, just like crude, you still get the bulk of it offline, uh, really even in a time when we would have expected that to bounce back under any kind of normal hurricane or storm conditions there. So you've lost 
at times as much as two BCF a day of production. On percentage terms, that's maybe not too crazy for the U.S. natural gas market, but it is a big deal when you talk about how tight this market has been in terms of that supply-demand balance, a market that was maybe hoping to build back inventories a little bit. Uh, you know, Heading into those key winter months, that's always where we've got our price risk, our upside risk, and this hurricane certainly has not made it any easier to build those inventories back. The other factor that we continue to see is uh, something that is new to the U.S. market in the past few years that continues to connect gas markets. Uh, you know, it's the LNG factor, the ability to export gas out of the U.S. market that continues to bring connectivity between U.S. prices, what we see in Europe and Asia. So no matter where you are in those regions, uh, you are affected by, by the others. And we see that in the U.S. right now where even with these higher prices that we're seeing, uh, where we're back, we're above $5 per mm BTU now on the prompt contract sitting here at 514, they can still comfortably turn a profit sending those LNG cargos out to European markets, to Asian markets, where prices are even much higher than what we see in the U.S. That continues to be supportive. And that's really kind of, you know, the perfect set of conditions for some bullishness that Hurricane Ida left us with, which was LNG infrastructure really wasn't damaged. So they're still able to send out cargoes, send that supply out of the U.S. But production infrastructure was very much damaged. And so that production has been lower. That combination of factors uh, really kind of supportive. It's rare that you get one and not the other. Uh, now, we do see production starting to come back online. That should help a little bit. Uh, but more and more, it looks like we're going to head it into winter with lower storage levels that continues to add upside risk. And what that really puts the focus on, we think about what do we want to look at moving forward here, big focus is going to be on as we start to get in that window where weather models can have a little bit of a degree of confidence in how are we going to start winter, whether it's going to be mild, colder than normal, that is going to have a big influence on price. A uh, lot of volatility potentially stored up in this market. Uh, and that means volatility in both, both directions. You know, we focus certainly on the upside right now. A colder winter would accelerate that upside. Uh, but you've got potential in the other direction too. If we start to get indications of a mild start to winter, you could see a decent premium actually coming out of this market. On the crude side, we want to pay attention to inventories. Those will be coming up on Wednesday for crude. Thursday, we'll get the latest inventories from natural gas. Definitely want to check in with that as well, see what the latest picture is. So a lot of things to follow up, both short term and a little bit longer in this market, and one that is fairly volatile uh, and really at a pivotal point in time. So we, of course, continue to follow up on these markets. Uh, stay, you know, stay kind of tuned in and, and kind of adjust as needed. Uh, want to invite everybody. We are back on our normal platform at our normal time, uh, beginning on Friday again. Normally broadcast Fridays and Mondays. So hope you'll join us for that. Uh, but also, we will be following up after this. Any of you who who have dropped in questions, uh, certainly we want to get in touch with you and be able to follow up with on um, that as well. Uh, but with that, I want to thank everybody for joining us. Hope you'll join us again. Thank you very much. Thank you.